Hello community! Now, we all know that reinforcement learning by human feedback was arguably the key behind the success of ChatGPT. But hey, it is now on the day, six months that ChatGPT was released. So what do you think we get rid of reinforcement learning? It's boring. We have something new. Direct preference optimization, DPO. So let's have a look at the new technology. Here we go. Our good old reinforcement learning from human feedback. You remember? It was a complex and often unstable procedure, first fitting your reward model that reflects the human preferences, then fine tuning the large unsupervised language model using reinforcement learning to maximize the estimated reward without drifting too far from the original model. Now, if you like it a little bit more structured on a technical side, we had our pipeline with our three phases, we had our supervised fine tuning on a high quality data set for each or multiple downstream task, dialogue, instruction following summarization. Then our SFT model is prompted with prompts to produce pairs of answers. Those pairs were presented to human labelers who expressed preferences for one answer. And those preferences were assumed to be generated by some latent reward model, which we didn't have access to. And finally, we had the reinforcement learning optimization. And during this reinforcement learning phase, we used the learned reward function to provide feedback to the language model. In particular, we formulated an optimization problem and maximized using our PPO. Proximal Policy Optimization from 2017. This was our good old reinforcement learning by human feedback. Now, May 29, 2023, and Stanford hit again. A direct preference optimization. What is it? Now, DPO, as it is called, is now able to bypass two steps the explicit reward estimation and the reinforcement learning to learn the policy using a single maximum likelihood objective. So unlike our prior reinforcement learning by human feedback, which learn a reward and then optimize it via reinforcement learning, this DPO, this new DPO approach by Stanford University, bypasses the reward modeling step completely and directly optimizes a language model using the preference data. How is this possible? Now, the authors here, beautiful archive preprint, read it, I can highly recommend it. It is a little bit on a complicated side and there are a lot of mathematical uh, proof, especially in the annex, and you, maybe you need a weekend, especially I will take a weekend to try to understand it, but highly interesting paper by Stanford. So the key insight is to leverage an analytical mapping from reward function to optimal policies. So this enables here the author to transform a loss function over the reward function into a loss function over the policies. And they say, and they argue, that this change of variables approach allows them to skip the reward modeling step. So in essence, if you want the policy network now represents both the language model and the reward itself. Not so easy to understand, but I have to understand the gradient of the loss function is not so complicated. I will show you the Python code to implement this in, the, in one of the next slides. So here, for a mechanistic understanding of DPO, the gradient of the loss function L for our loss function L, our gradient for our DPO method. Um, it, I, I like when they write intuitively. <laughs> okay, we, we go with the original text. Intuitively, the gradient of the loss function increases the likelihood of the preferred completion and decreases the likelihood of the dispreferred completion. Well, of course. Importantly, the examples are weighted, weighted by how much higher the implicit reward model rates the dispreferred completion. An interesting formula. Right now, I think I have to spend some more hours to really get the steps 
And as I told you in the annex of this publication, there are several pages of mathematical explanation. So take your time to understand it. But summarizing it, learning now from human preferences, we know this is a powerful scalable framework for training here our LLMs. And with this new DPO, we have a simple training paradigm for training our language models from preferences without reinforcement learning. I think this is, this is amazing that we could do this. So rather than yes, 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 a mapping, satisfy human preferences directly with a simple loss, with a simple cross entropy loss. I don't know if it's simple loss function, but it's okay. With a, a single, let's say a single cross entropy loss function without reinforcement learning. And with virtually no tuning of the hyperparameters, the authors presented in the preprint that the new DPO performs similarly or better than existing reinforcement learning by human feedback algorithms, including those on PPO. So this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. And they argue that this new methodology reduces the barrier to train LLMs from human preferences. So this opens up here amazing possibilities. However, I mean, it is Stanford, imagine. They were only able to evaluate models up to a 6 billion free trainable parameters. And they say in the future, their future work will be scaling now this DPO to state-of-the-art models, 175 billion free parameters, 400, 500 million billion <laughs> free trainable parameters. So there's a lot more to come, but a highly interesting preprint. Yeah, I told you the, the PyTorch code is rather simple for the DPO loss function. This is it. That's it. They even give you the parameter. Yes, yes, yes. You find all of this in the literature. And then they also have here a human comparison between the two methodologies, between PPO, the classical PPO, and now the DPO. And you have here a prompt, and then you have the answer by DPO, and here by PPO, and then you have here a human judgment. This is just one example that you see how this happens. The judgment by the human evaluator was that the summary by DPO is more effectively captures the main post, main point of the post by focusing on making Yes, yes, yes. So you can see yourself. Here's another example. You see here the direct performance between the PPO and the DPO without reinforcement learning. So it is amazing. But of course, I think now I have to, I have competition in house. So I also said, hey, GPT-4, have a look at this archive preprint by Stanford. And here on the next three pages, I show you here the summary generated here by uh, a plugin on GPT-4 called Scholar AI. And this is page one, it's recorded in 4K. So you have no problem pausing and reading page one, page two, and page three. It is really interesting. It is a little bit mathematically challenging and I have to experience it myself. I have to spend, I guess, a weekend to really understand it. But if this works out, if this is really, as the authors from Stanford describe it, so effective, this is really a significant step forward to train new large language models on human preferences. This was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. It was informative. And I hope to see you in my next video.